Welcome to ETF Edge, your go-to place for everything exchange traded funds. I'm Pippa Stevens in for Bob Pisani. Amid a flurry of activity late last week, the SEC surprised both the crypto and ETF worlds by approving the listing of spot Ethereum funds for trading. Joining me now is Jan Van Eck, CEO of Van Eck and the first applicant for spot Ethereum ETF. Also with us is Todd Sohn, ETF and technical strategist at Strategus. So Jan, I want to start with you because now that you have this approval, what can we expect next? Sure. Uh, we got step one, which is the exchanges uh, have the green light to list Ethereum spot ETFs. Step two is our prospectuses need to be approved. So we're in the process of getting comments uh, with, from the SEC to get it in line with what their expectations are. And I assume that's true for all the other uh, eight other applicants uh, for the spot ETF approval. And so then does this decision, you know, settle on the outstanding question of our cryptos, a security or a commodity question? Does it provide more clarity on that? This is this is really one of the most amazing things that I've seen in, in my career with respect to securities regulation. What happened is there was a bipartisan vote in the House of Representatives to give authority for what I call blockchain software or crypto or digital assets, but let's call it blockchain software, take it from the SEC and give it to the CFTC. Now that probably won't be voted on in the Senate this year. Uh, the name of the bill is FIT21. But the fact that that got 60 to 70 Democratic uh, representatives in the House meant that there was a real risk that the SEC was going to lose any kind of jurisdiction over digital assets. So uh, that the first reaction was to get the ETF, uh, Ethereum ETF approval uh, green lighted. Uh, but I think it, there's a bigger narrative going on as well. Certainly seems like shifting winds in Washington. And, and now, Todd, I want to bring you in here because with all the retail hype aside, we've now seen institutional adoption of Bitcoin ETFs by the likes of Morgan Stanley and Wells Fargo. Will that kind of smooth out some of the volatility that we've seen in the past for cryptocurrencies? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think, first of all, this is a this is a win for all investors right across the spectrum, retail institutions. You can now get different types of crypto in the ETF wrapper. And I'm sure you'll start to see issuers address the space in different manners, um, whether it's cross-linking equity with crypto or different types of crypto and, and trend following strategies. Uh, will it smooth out the volatility? I mean, crypto has always been a volatile asset. I don't know if these ETFs will ever change that. Um, we'll see how the forward returns look like. I would be skeptical that all of a sudden you're going to start to see more uh, short duration or equity like volatility from the crypto space, just given the past history. So um, on one end, a win for access in the ETF wrapper. But on the other hand, if you're going to start to add cryptocurrencies to your portfolio, just be mindful of you're adding a very high doses of volatility. Um, I think that's really the most important message going forward for investors. All right. So a win for access. But, you know, Todd, do you expect the same type of reception for Ethereum as we've seen for Bitcoin, you know, they have a really different use case for each and adoption by both retail and institutional investors, you know, could potentially be slower here, given just less awareness of Ethereum and what that product is. Yeah, you might be onto something there. And the, and the analogy I'm wondering if it's appropriate is if Bitcoin is to gold, then Ethereum might be to silver. And that, again, those are completely different investment use cases. But you look at something like the iShare Silver Trust that has about 12 billion in it whereas GLD is upwards of 60. So I would imagine there will be demand for Ethereum, especially those who may find the risk reward profile more attractive. But I do not suspect that we'll see the same hype as we saw with the original spot Bitcoin ETFs back in January. And you saw the same thing last year with the Ethereum futures ETFs, right? Bitcoin futures ETFs had pretty good demand out of the gate and the, future, the Ethereum products kind of fell flat in their face. So it'll be up to Van Eck, it'll be up to other issuers to help explain the differences but I suspect for a lot of investors, just getting Bitcoin exposure will be good enough for them in terms of their cryptocurrency uh, uh, sleeve of the portfolios. And Jan, I asked the same question here to you. You know, how, what kind of reception are you expecting for this future product? And how are you going to, uh, you know, lead to bigger awareness for Ethereum and why this product is attractive? 
Um, I think the biggest overwhelming thing is sort of what Todd alluded to, which is the education aspect of, of talking to investors. So there's the first piece, which you alluded to, Pippa, which is additional types of investors could now participate. Uh, and we saw this with Bitcoin, and we're still engaged with a lot of uh, investors about you know Bitcoin and how that fits in people's portfolios. But what I'd like to say is, look, this is software. And if you're an investor, sure, you need to know the macro, you know, Fed policy and all that with respect to Bitcoin and our ETF HODL, HODL. But you also have to know how there, there's their software networks and how is usage on those networks changing. And so that kind of information, even though it's totally transparent on the Internet, is very hard for the average investor to kind of analyze. Uh, we, we try to do that through our research, but there's a, an overwhelming amount of education uh, around these uh, digital asset softwares. And I, and I also think that, you know, kind of what's the shorthand for it? So is it the silver? Or we like to say, is it the app store? Um, you know, what are these different, what's the defining characteristic of these different software platforms?